All right, hello again, stream of consciousness. Now I'm gonna be going over my code machine. This is my originator. I haven't really bothered to clean any of these because I've uh, recently been using them. Well, I think I'm almost always have recently been using them. However, in this case, I, I cut some keys this morning, get them out the door. So here's, um, yeah, so here's here's my code machine. This is an ITL 950C or interlock tools. You know, you can see up here. So um, I'm gonna go over some of the things that I like, why I chose this machine, and uh, you know, things that I like, uh, what could possibly be better, and then you know, we'll just go from there. Stream of consciousness kind of review. Not like the world needs a review of a key machine that most people are never gonna be looking at unless they're a locksmith, but here we go. So I chose this machine over other originators such as the vaunted Blitz 1200 machine that HPC makes, which is a manual originator and that you have to manually dial all controls in with uh, spacing and depth, as well as have cards and a plethora of cutting wheels. I don't really like that, that you need so much to make it as versatile as it's able to be. Not a big fan. And then uh, the cards are another thing that takes up a lot of space and the machine is pretty chunky. Uh, that does not mean that I don't think it's a good machine. I do think that they're a good machine. They're just not what I wanted, especially since this alternates between here on my bench and then when I go to either trade shows or conventions or any other place that I might sell or make keys as you know demonstration of what I tend to do as a locksmith this is my ideal because it goes well in a van and, I, and um, it also has built-in key codes for a lot of automotive some residential some padlocks so it's really nice for all those things, controls are all over here. This is not a fully automatic originator. It is a semi-automatic in that when I turn this dial, it moves this along a geared axis, and then there's a motor that plunges the carriage for the steps of the cuts. So um, I'm gonna be cutting a key on camera here. And then another thing that I really liked is that this machine will do everything with one wheel, you know, so I can do Medico with this wheel. I can do standard Fords. I can do everything with just this one wheel. This is the original cutting wheel that it came with. Uh, and uh, I just have it up there because I don't have anywhere else to keep, uh, put it, you know? And um, if I ever need a plunging cutter, uh, this is good. It's still relatively sharp, so I don't mind having it. And then if I ever wanted to do uh, a flat steel key origination, I could get slaughter wheels I'm probably not ever gonna do that because I have another machine that I'm gonna turn into with my flat steel machine. I'm just fidgeting here. That's a bad habit, I guess. So, and then these inserts all go to a particular key system and they make fitting the, the keys in the vice jaw here simpler and more secure. So for most keys, the standard insert, if you're doing a little bit of everything is the number two insert, which is right here. So I got one, two, three, various uh, automotives. And then here's for best. And then this is a uh, Ford. And then one A, this kind of is a default for a lot of different key systems. You can use it for that. So anyway, and then also this machine will do Medico as just like my duplicator will. So I'll pull out this stop here in the back and turn it so it doesn't move anywhere. And then I just push this. So I can originate Medico with this guy. So, and then, yeah. And then that'll lock it in place. And then when I wanna move it back, I just reverse the process. So, and there we go. A lot of loud bangs. I Just like uh, what I'm gonna be meaning to do with my duplicator video, I'm gonna try to mute the sound of the keys being cut. That's not a very pleasant sound, but I'll do a little dialogue leading up to this. So here's what I'm gonna do. Um, in my duplicator video, I cut this key on my duplicator and then I
duplicated this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna originate another one. And then here's my test cylinder. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to reset because Schlage is the default. I'll reset the machine. I'm gonna poke out the insert. I had the Chrysler insert in this because I was doing some uh, Marshall keys for Chrysler. I'm gonna grab myself an SC4 off my key wall. So above all, what I try to do, because uh, I like to be a versatile shop, you know, I'm not doing full service locksmithing as my day job anymore. You know, that's uh, this is now a hobby. So it means that I get to do little videos about this and it not technically being client facing work because this is all my, my personal stuff now. So. I'm also doing this to the side so I can't look straight down. So tighten it. There's a little stop over here that is the uh, the shoulder stop. So I'm gonna move this forward. So maybe we can see here. Yeah, so right down there. So that taps against the shoulder up here and that gives me an indication of where we stop this at. So we'll go ahead and reel back. And, all right, there we go. Okay, um, these aren't meant to be super awesome videos, but they are fun for me, and I have been having a productive streak, if you could call it productive. Seven, eight, nine, five, eight, four. So, bidding. So, I have the bidding dialed in right here. This is all good. Um, I'm ready to cut now, and I will. So I'm gonna hit the cut button. This will start the wheel and it will engage this because look, I can move it along the carriage here. I can move the carriage along the axis, but it's not cutting yet. I need to engage the cutting sequence, so cut. It's gonna tell me to move it and then it will detect upon the ITL number what the spacing is gonna be. So, all right, cutting wheel is spinning now. I'm gonna stop talking. I'll re-engage once I'm done cutting. Here's our key. I'm going to deburr it over on the duplicator. Great. Okay. Test cylinder duplicate. Or uh, rather, uh, originate. Originated key. Originate. Yeah. So, all right. Ooh. It's clicky poppy. Maybe I got the spacing wrong. Or I think it's actually just a crappy cylinder. It probably is. So... Yeah, let's click on this too. So anyway, that's what I got for this. So I'm gonna go over how we might tell it what key to cut. So say you've, man, I'm, I'm never gonna be a pro at this. Lock noob and all you other folks who do this on the regular, you have my amazement. Who even gets lighting correct? I don't know. So uh, say you want to cut uh, that ubiquitous C8751. We're going to reach on over here to our key wall. We're going to chalk up a key, which uh, in this case, it's a Y11. CH751 is a Y11. And now um, I've, done, I've cut it so many times that I know what it's meant to be. So um, I think we might even be able to search for it. I'm just going to go C, Alt, H, we're going to go 751, search. We're going to go utility locks, select. It's loading. Yale, Brockway, Yale Freightliner. Either of those is going to work because it was used for cabinet hardware, CH. And uh, this is going to pull up uh, the bidding 24242. So it's going to select. Let's see, two, four, two, four, two. And let's see if I can, I can't zoom in. Okay, this is gonna be a real bad video, but who cares, I'm already this far into it. 
Okay, so now we're gonna go, and we're gonna cut the key. So you can manually enter all that information. I just didn't because it was able to search it. Here we go, I'm gonna mute myself now. C8751, I'm gonna deburr it. There it is. Two, four, two, four, two. Let's see if I can't get a, yeah, there we go. I, uh, I actually don't have any of those right now. I got rid of the last batch of cam locks I had that you see, 751, but all right. Uh, about 10 minutes explaining my originator, I think is perfectly suitable for the amount of interest I'm gonna get. So um, I'm gonna be slowly working through bits and bobs from my collection and just uploading some stuff for historical precedent uh, that's going to include books, tools, and the like. So if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, just stay tuned. And as always, I've been Rubber Band.